Good morning, everybody. It's day three, and I hope that you're doing well. I hope you've been able to join us each and every morning or throughout the day, and I hope that you're sharing these posts with everyone that we can have Encounter Church at home. When we look around us today, don't curse the darkness. That's what we say here. We don't curse the darkness, but we light a candle. The darker the night means this, the brighter the light can shine. And what an opportunity it is for us to shine. Really, church shines the brightest in times of crisis. It's the time where people can rally to the church. When other people are closing down, it's the opportunity for the church to charge her head. And we're looking to be that ray of hope in these times to the world. You know, the children of Israel, when they went through the plagues, the Bible says that God distinguished between the Israelites and the children, or and the Egyptians, rather. And I just really believe there needs to be a distinction between us, that the world's going to look and say, hey, what's the deal? How come they have joy? How come they have peace? What's the difference? And we'll be able to throw our hands in the air and say, it's only Jesus. It's through Jesus. And we can be that light. We can be that hands and feet to Jesus. And again, we're encouraging you. Come on, have that accountability partner. I don't believe you should tell all your business to everyone, but you've got to have someone if not you're in trouble. So find that someone that you can just share life with. And it's a great opportunity to do this, not just during this time, but just in life period, just to have people that we do life with alone not that we don't do life alone rather but we do life together so as we grow the need is we've got to get smaller and what a great opportunity times like this are just for us to reevaluate and see and just make sure we're feeding ourselves and yes this is different but different's not always bad and it's something and it's an opportunity that we can still come and be with you so every day we're going to soak the scripture we're going to look at the observation of it we're going to look at the application for our lives, and then we're going to pray and ask God to touch us. So here's the scripture today, Psalms 23, verse 3. It says, he renews my strength. He restores my soul, the New King James Version says. He guides me, here it is again, he leads me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name or for his name's sake. So here's the observation. Think about this. Reputation and a good name is something that we really fight to obtain and something we really strive to achieve and to have and to keep. And it's why is that? Because it's hard to shake a bad reputation. Oh, here comes such and such. Oh, run for your life. Here they are. Oh, I know what they're going to want. Reputation will always precede you. And it's so sad today that God has a bad name. It's so sad today that church has a bad name. So sad today that Christians have a bad name. And it's not God's fault. It's our fault. Come on, the name actually Christian in the book of Acts came as a mockery. The people around said, oh, look at them. They're just little Christs. But little did they know that would turn out to be the greatest compliment, that we need to be Christ-like in our lives. But we haven't been. And that's why Christianity, the church, and God has got a bad name. And I really believe it's time to take his name back. And with this time, it's an opportunity for the church to shine, to be that beacon of hope, for us to tell people about Jesus, the peace and hope he wants to be, and to make his name excellent. Again, Psalms 8 verse 9 says, O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And then what do we see in the beginning of verse 3? It says, he renews my strength or he restores my soul. You see, God designed us with three distinct parts. And there has to be a spiritual order to them. We're made up of a spirit, a soul, and a body. Our spirit needs to be redeemed. Our soul needs to be restored. And our body must surrender. So when we get saved and we have a, an encounter with God, a relationship with God, Come on, our spirit is made alive. That's connected with God. But then we have our soul, and that's the problem. That's the area that we really need to deal with. Because our soul is separated into three parts. It's our mind, which thinks and reasons. It's our will, which makes the choices. It's our emotions, what we believe, what we feel, and what we remember. And then there's the body. The body is the last part, and that's the part that houses our spirit and soul. But our body also has appetites, both good and bad, and it has cravings. So again, we've got to be careful. So the spiritual order we need in our life is spirit, soul, 
and body. So here's the application. Who's in control? What is driving your life? Is it your body and the cravings and the appetites? Is it your soul, which is your appetite, or rather, sorry, which is, you, come on, it, help me here. It's, you know, it's all those things which your emotions, your will, and your mind. There you go, I'll get it in a minute. Is it that which is driving you, or is it your spirit, man, that was with God? And that's why David says we need to renew our soul. I believe we need to renew our mind, we need to renew our will, and we need to renew our emotions. You see, living in spiritual order brings incredible benefits. It brings protection. It brings spiritual growth. It brings power to overcome obstacles and challenges in our lives. But to live outside of spiritual order, not to have spirit, soul, and body, it can be so dangerous. You see, when our soul or our body lead us, it opens a door for the enemy to operate in our lives. Come on. We will be protected from the enemy when we choose to do things God's way and give control of our lives over to him. So monitor your life. Every day, ask yourself the question, what am I feeding? When I'm looking at things, what am I feeding? Is this feeding my spirit, my soul, or my body? There's nothing wrong with feeding your soul and body. But there's something wrong if you're feeding them more than your spirit because what you feed the most is what's going to rule in your life. So you've got to look at your life and ask yourself, maybe my spirit is not the strongest because I'm feeding the other things in a greater way. So the application today is this. Yes, God wants to lead us. Yes, God wants to restore us. But we've got to allow and we've got to place our lives in the proper spiritual order. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you today for your goodness and mercies in each and every one of our lives. God, I just pray that, God, you would be with us. God, as we look to you, help us, God, to make the order of our life the right order that's going to bring blessings, spiritual growth and benefits to our life, not damnation and destruction and emptiness, because that's what happens when we're led by our will and our emotions and our feelings, because our feelings will lie to us. But God, I pray that we would allow our spirit man to rise, that we would feed on your word in prayer, in relationships, God, that we would feed, God, our spirit man, God, it would be renewed each and every day as you also want to renew our soul. God, we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We love you. We adore you in Jesus name. Amen. Remember, they said social distancing. We've changed that to physical distancing because we believe you need to be socially connected. So stay connected, stay involved. If we can help you in any way, call the office, email us, ec at Encounter Church. We want to be there to help you, to bless your life, and to encourage you through these times. And what can we pray with you for? Post it in the comments below, and we would love to stand in agreement with you. Have a great and wonderful day.